Hey, 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 what's up guys? Got a new desk. The Picant desk from Ikea. Very sturdy looking desk. Very sleek looking black. Really goes nice with my setup. Unlike that brown table I've been using in my videos so you guys seen. Finally have a desk upgrade. Looks super, super nice. Hey guys, how's it going? It's Jason back with another weekly Wednesday vlog. So last week, my buddy Eric sent me a link to a Sony rumor and the article is about the 7200G Master lens costing about 4,200 US dollars. Seriously, Sony, 4,200 dollars for a 7200 lens? Okay guys, I know that rumor is a rumor. It's not true. Hopefully it's not true, but a lot of the rumors that I've been reading about the cameras are usually pretty spot on and I have reasons to believe that Sony could be charging $4,200 for their 7200 lens. Now this number, um, this conversion is actually this number of 4200 was a conversion from the Australian dollar. So, or is it does Australian use dollars? Australian currency. So it may not be as jacked up here in the US, but if it's $4,200, it's kind of ridiculous because that's, that's more than twice the price of a, the Canon and Nikon version. You can literally get the Canon version and the Nikon version, both 7200, both very sharp for the price of one Sony G Master lens. That's absolutely insane. I mean, like, I know their A mount version, the Sony A mount version, costs about three grand, and that to me is like, okay debatable like if the G Master came out around that same price maybe some more like $3,200 or something I I probably still get it because I'm saving up for it right now and, and and I'm gonna get it if it's that price but if it's $4,200 like mm, nah, I'm good I'm I would probably just get a 60 a full frame 60 and get the Canon 7200 and I and I still save money like that like that's that, that in itself is already like three grand or even less you know, because I can get a used version and a used 60 and it'll still be less. Yeah, like if that, if it comes down to that, I'll just get that and just like use it as like a second camera or something. Another likely alternative, which I'm hoping will solve our expensive problem, is uh, Sigma is going to release their own adapter called the MC11. This adapter pretty much takes the Canon EF lenses or the Sony SA lenses and adapts it to the E mount for the Sony. And like the Metabones, the autofocus is going to work. But unlike the Metabones, the eye autofocus is going to work. That means that's going to work. The uh, center lock-on focus is going to work. The expandable lock-on autofocus tracking manual focus thing works with the Sony cameras, which is very, very exciting. And as you guys know, the Sigma lenses, especially their art ones, are extremely, extremely sharp. Plus, the bonus is that the Sigma lenses are way, 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 way more affordable than the Zeiss lenses and, and possibly the coming out Sony $7200, $42,000 lens. Another rumor is that people are saying uh, Sigma is going to be releasing their 24-70 f2.8 art lens and a 70-200 f2.8 art lens. Um, they're saying that these lenses are going to be announced or yeah, pretty much announced at the next Photokina, uh, which is going to be in September 2016. I, I don't dwell on rumors too much, but I, I can only hope that they will release like a 24-70 and a 70-200 uh, art series. Um, but I'm also hearing stuff like Sigma wanting to concentrate more on fast prime lenses. So they also announced just a 200 millimeter prime lens. I don't know. I don't know yet, but I'm hoping that this will happen. Regardless, I do want to get my hands on the first batch of the MC11 adapters because I want to pick up um, a 50 millimeter prime 1.4 because I heard that's super sharp. Earlier this week, I was debating whether I should get the Zeiss 55 millimeter 1.8 lens because I've been hearing incredible things about it. It was at a very great price. It was like $6.99 on eBay. Though it's gray market, I, I still would have put a trigger on it. Um, but I mean, even at $700, it's still pretty darn expensive because you can get a 50 millimeter 1.4 Sigma lens for a thousand bucks. I know it's a, it's, it's a $300 difference, but that $300 difference comes with extra stops of light. It's at 1.4 and the other one's at 1 1.8. And I heard the Sigma 50 millimeter is pretty darn sharp as well. Um, I probably picked that up, but I would likely pick up, my next lens would probably most likely be the 85 millimeter 1 point something. I don't know yet. It's gonna be an 85 millimeter. I wanna get one because it's great for portraits. Um, I heard Sigma, 
man, this is a lot of rumors in this video. This whole video is rumors. Um, but I heard Sigma is going to be releasing their own 85 millimeter 1.4 art lens. Um, but I heard that from a group, not a rumor site. So anyways, I'm hoping they will say something about that in the coming months, hopefully when Photokina 2016 is happening, because I do want to pick up an 85. If by the end of the year or after that event has passed, which is at the end of September, um, I don't hear anything from Sigma getting like an 85 millimeter, um, then I'm probably just going to go with the G Master 85 millimeter. So yeah, that's the plan for me. Um, but I'm still excited to get the MC11 adapter. I'll, I'll likely pick up a lot more Sigma prime lenses and use it with the A7R2. So last week I went to the event called Tyencon to test out the G Master 24 to 70 millimeter lens. And in fact, I'm editing the video right now. Now at the time of shooting, I wasn't very happy with how the tests were coming out. Had a little bit of monitor issue. Um, I was using the Ninja 2 to record and it was hard to gauge the color and everything. And um, the vibe just wasn't right for me. Nothing wrong with the convention or anything. I just felt like the test could have been a lot better and it's probably just on, on my end. But there's still some clips in there I can salvage just to show you guys how amazing this lens is. Um, if you used any 24 to 70 f2.8 lenses, you know what you're getting. But the fact that this lens works with the Sony camera, works with the autofocus, the spot on, lock on, autofocus, expandable point, all that stuff. The fact that it works with all of those makes this lens a well worth investment. So I'll talk more about this lens in this, in that video right there. Um, when it comes out, it'll probably either drop tonight, depending on how much work that needs to go into it. If it, if there's a lot of work that I need to put into this video, then it's going to come out at the end of the week. So please look forward to that. All right, guys, before I conclude this video, I want to share with you guys two resources I found yesterday. As you guys know, I'm still trying to improve my craft in photography, especially in post-processing and editing in Lightroom. And one of the channels that I discovered yesterday is called Photos in Color. Uh, pretty much this guy named Ed teaches you how to use Lightroom. And unlike a lot of the tutorials I watched, this guy really knows how to teach. Like his presentation, his delivery and everything is just so smooth. It just like, it just like flows out of him. Like he's a natural teacher and I, I learned so much from him. Um, one of the videos that I watched, uh, it was like his full beauty retouch video. Like I just like watched that. It was just 20 minutes long. I watched it and I got so much out of it. Like check out this picture of Belle I took at WonderCon. So this is the first edit, I guess. I don't even know you can call that editing. But boom, after watching his video, look at that. This is another picture I took of Bell and just applying the techniques that he taught me. What a difference. Like I, I know, I know there could be a lot more work that could be done to this photo, but just comparing this first edit that I did for this photo and this next edit I did for this photo, holy cow. So if you guys are looking for like YouTube tutorials on how to use Lightroom, how to improve your editing more in Lightroom, definitely check out Photos in Color. If you guys want to be more Photoshop savvy, um, check out Flurn. Like he teaches you how to do uh, photo retouching and all of that in Photoshop, but Photos in Color teaches you how to do it in Lightroom. So both resources, both amazing resources. All right, so Flurn is not the second resource I want to share with you guys. The second resource I want to share with you guys is actually uh, a person by the name of Brittany Borowski. Brittany Bur Borowski Photography. I don't want to butcher her name, but uh, if you guys uh, are are interested in using ViscoCam presets in your photo processing, definitely check her out. She not she doesn't exactly teaches you how to use the presets. What she makes is these like speed editing videos where like you can kind of see how she edit her photo with the ViscoCam preset. Like she works on top, she works off from the ViscoCam preset. So if you guys like that um, faded film look or or, or, or the, the 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 classic camera looks or anything like that, like the the photo the Instagram photos that you would probably run into on Instagram. If you're a fan of that look, definitely check her out. But her speed video is not the only thing that I really like about her. What I really like about her is like her presentation on her channel. Like when she made these speed tutorial videos, like she also had like little very cinematic looking uh, feuds in the beginning of the video first. Um, and, I, and I really like her philosophy too. Like she doesn't really pose her model. She doesn't tell her model how to pose. She just let her model kind of do their own thing, like a little dance and all that. And she just really captures that candid moment, which I really like that natural look too. I really like that really candid moment that comes out of a person rather than telling them, hey, put your hand here, move your leg here and do any of that stuff. It, it's, 
I definitely like the natural movement, so I definitely want to be incorporating that kind of technique into my next photo shoot. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching. I know this video was just full of rumors, but again, this vlog is just me sharing you some of the updates that are going on in my uh, freelance life. So thanks for watching. If you guys made it this far, give me a thumbs up and I'll see you guys in that video. Peace.